alleged signs from God, the stigmata. The person who experiences this is believed to be suffering literally the anxiety and the wounds of Christ as he was crucified. Now, Michael, you had heard reports that Katya Rivas had experienced and suffered through the stigmata before, and you were determined, were you not, to get this on camera? Yeah, and in fact, we interviewed a doctor who said that he'd witnessed Katya having what appeared to be a stigmata, and she exhibited the, the vital signs of a person who was dying. He said that... Uh, the wounds were real, um, but incredibly had healed when he examined her the next day. Um, I thought it was essential for this story that we filmed the experience for ourselves and our first attempt became in itself part of the story. 2,000 years ago, a man suffered an agonising death. Nails were driven through his hands and feet, a spear pierced his side, and a crown of thorns was forced upon his head. The injuries and suffering of Jesus Christ have been known to manifest themselves in ordinary men and women. It's the phenomenon called stigmata. St. Francis of Assisi reputedly suffered the stigmata in the year 1224. The marks that appeared on his hands, feet and side remained with him until his death. The stigmata continues to inspire awe and amazement. In May of this year, a crowd well in excess of a million people gathered in Rome for the beatification of Padre Pio. For 50 years, the late Padre Pio bled from supernatural wounds to his hands and feet. The Vatican has only authenticated 12 cases of stigmata. Case number 13 may prove to be Cartier Rivas. May prove. We began our investigation of stigmata in Bolivia at Easter. We believed that Cartier's stigmata could happen on Good Friday, the day of Christ's crucifixion. If this was to happen, we would be ready to film it and take samples of blood for laboratory testing. But as we began filming, Cartier says she received another message for us from Jesus. Tell Mike that maybe this is not the moment or time to take the samples you are looking for. There would be no stigmata. We had come all the way to Bolivia, it seems, for nothing. And we were disappointed. But the messages continue. Learn to trust in me more. This is not the right time. According to this message, the stigmata would happen in Jesus' time, not ours. Our patients, we were told, would be rewarded. Ready? Ready? Great. Katia, are you ready? The following day came an incredible prophecy. As we were setting up for an interview with Katia, she interrupted to say she had received a new message from Jesus. In reference to Mike, he will see more marvelous things through me. Not only would there be a full stigmata, but the exact date it would occur was stated in the message. The day after the day of Corpus Christi. No maybes, no conditions. This was our first specific prophecy. So we can expect stigmata after Corpus Christi? The next day. Cartier's credibility was now on the line. On June the 4th, we had an appointment with God. Our science would test Cartier's faith. That will give us a lot to think about. And me also. 
The Roman Catholic Feast Day of Corpus Christi is a celebration of the Church's central sacrament, communion, a belief that the bread and wine offered to the celebrants is the body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi, in Latin, body of Christ. It took place this year on June 3rd. Now remember, Katya told Michael that the stigmata would occur the day after Corpus Christi on June 4th. And Michael and his team then returned to Cochabamba, still not knowing if the stigmata would take place. Now, Michael, this is a rather large claim, not a whole lot of, uh, you know, stuff to follow here to, to tell you where you're going to lead. Was there a biblical timetable to let you know what you should expect? Yeah, we were relying on Christian history quite a bit. And we're told that the suffering of Christ before his crucifixion actually started the night before in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he suffered mental pain and anguish, anxiety. And Katia has told us that she also, before the night before she suffers what she believes to be a stigmata, she has great mental pain and anxiety. So we were most anxious to observe her on the night before, that Thursday night. It is Thursday morning and Katia has agreed to let us take blood samples. Yeah. Squeeze your finger back there a little bit. If she does have the predicted stigmata tomorrow, then we'll also take blood from those wounds for comparisons. Do you need more? A little bit more. Katia believes the blood from the stigmata may not be exclusively hers. When you have these wounds, who do the wounds belong to? Jesus. Jesus. That evening, when we return to Katia's house, she appears to be happy and well. But soon she becomes distracted and introspective. She's beginning to get the answer. Uh, Even if I am with many people, I feel lonely and abandoned. Like I am not understood by many people. I feel weak, like I cannot do anything. Tell that person. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> She's pregnant. She's crying. Katia has quietly left us. We find her alone in her prayer room. I start crying for any reason. As the hours go by, it is such an anxiety that I cannot be at ease anywhere. The pain comes and goes, and I start praying. Then there is a very deep sadness. We still don't know if Katia will have the stigmata tomorrow, but what she says she is feeling now is the emotional suffering which always comes first. It is, she says, the worst time. It seems to us there is little doubt that what she is feeling now is real and profound. Now, no doubt, Michael, it seems very moving and very disturbing. But again, there are viewers out there who will say she's faking it, it's psychosomatic. How confident were you being there that she would actually go through the physical stigmata the following day? I wasn't confident. I did have a feeling that it would happen the next day. But the question of whether it's psychosomatic is a very relevant point. There are doctors, psychiatrists, even priests who believe the external signs of the stigmata can be psychosomatic. So if Katia was somehow mentally self-inducing all this, then her distress that night could not be seen as conclusive proof of the stigmata to come. We had to wait for the Friday. Jesus is said to have started to carry the cross at midday and died at 3 p.m. So those were the hours we were watching for. It's 12 noon and Katia is feeling the pain that she believes is the beginning of the stigmata. I check Katia for any visible signs, but there is nothing. So Do these you know are scars from previous yes. stigmata. Mm -hmm. There's nothing fresh. As the minutes pass, her pain appears to intensify. Is the stigmata really about to show itself? Uh. 
Cartier's spiritual advisor, Father Renzo Cesolo, is by Cartier's side. He notices that her forehead has begun to bleed from tiny wounds which would be consistent with the crown of thorns. She feels it's burning. Can I see Katia? Excuse me. It's 12.15. And the first mark of the stigmata on the hand is now appearing. A tiny cross has appeared on Katia's hand. Descendió los infiernos, se antes se había resucitado de los muertos. Subió a los cielos y está sentado en la tentación y no ser más. Amén. Wounds now appear on Cartier's feet. They start to bleed. Father Renzo intensifies his praying. As carefully as I can, I take the samples we need for our blood tests. I must stay away from the wound. Clearly, has come through very dramatically and very quickly now. Just one more, Katia. Thank you, Katia. We've been with Katia for more than an hour, and her wounds have continued to deepen. She is bruised and grazed below her left eye. Are these the wounds of Christ? I just want to just relax your hand there. Sorry, Cartier. No, 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 no. It's Cartier appears to be in great pain. For those of us present, it feels very real and very disturbing. <laughs> Friends who have come to pray with Cartier gently wrap her bleeding hands with bandages. She says at this moment her lungs are filling up with liquid. It is now 2.45. If you believe that Katia is suffering as Christ did on the cross, then she is now reaching the final stages of the crucifixion and approaching death from prolonged torture. Katia's daughter, Tatiana, has arrived to help her mother. It is heartbreaking and frightening. Her mother's pain is affecting everyone in the room.
Mm, that was so very hard to watch. And on television, you were there. You watched those wounds, Michael, spring from nothing. How did you react being there, watching it with your own eyes? It was very disturbing. I, I mean, I think I, a lot of the viewers watching now will feel what I felt then. Maybe being there, it was a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. So mind-boggling and inexplicable. Yet those viewers you're talking about, many of them are saying that is totally self-inflicted. Was there any point where she, you saw her or she could have done this to herself? There is no way that was self-inflicted. We were there all the time. We had access to Cartier all the time. We saw the wounds start from nothing. The first wound on her hand was a pink dot. And you saw the end result. It simply was not self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. Now, you're a skeptical journalist. You feeling a bit more spiritual these days as a result of watching that firsthand? It certainly pushes you heavily in that direction, but you can't rely on your emotionalism when you're making that judgment or See? even a feeling of spirituality. So I felt pretty strongly that we still had one more chapter of the stigmata to go. More proof. We had to go back the next day and see the condition of her wounds. Katia, good morning. Good morning. How was Mike? When I visit Katia the day after the stigmata, I am shocked by her recovery. So much better. Less than 24 hours ago, she literally appeared to be dying. Today, she is almost fully recovered. The most striking change is in her face. The wound below her left eye has disappeared, as have the marks on her forehead. And your hands? The back of her hands, yesterday, open, bleeding wounds, have also healed. Two crosses now. And her feet, again, Open bleeding wounds less than 24 hours ago show wounds just healed, smooth to touch. So, no more stigmata. Katia said she received this message from Jesus after her suffering stopped. I have been preparing you for this day because I needed to reach the world one more time through someone like you to show the world my suffering. Thank you. So she was on a mission and you were there to help. Yeah, if you believe that message, it was remarkably strong. Jesus was saying to her, everything you've been through was to prepare you for this day. Your previous stigmata, all the messages, all your work. It was uh, quite a message. <laughs> a lot of pressure for, for one, one journalist, no? Um, but you actually saw the wounds healed the next day. I mean, you, you looked at them with your own eyes and you saw that there was just a bare scar. Is that right? Absolutely. And uh, I'm even on her feet where the wounds you could still see, there was no scab and they were smooth to the touch, mm -hmm. which to me makes the psychosomatic theory quite unlikely. But, of course, we still had the blood to test. Now, what were you looking for in the testing of that blood? Well, firstly, in being able to take the blood, that was part of our test, to authenticate that the wounds were real. The fact that we could take blood from wounds authenticated that. But then there's the question, if the wounds are the wounds of Christ, could the blood be the blood of Christ? I'm glad we're not asking any small questions in our special. <laughs> when we come back, we'll be going back to Forensic Analytical, where blood expert Lisa Calandro will attempt to answer those questions live. Stay with us. We just saw Katya Rivas appeared to experience the stigmata while Michael and his team were present at her home in Bolivia. And while she was bleeding, Michael was permitted to take samples of the blood. Let's go back now live once again to Forensic Analytical, where expert Lisa Calandro is standing by to tell us of the results done on that blood. Lisa, anything unusual? Well, what we received was samples taken from the hands and feet and also two known reference samples. And those are samples taken from known individuals. Uh, we looked at the hands and feet samples first to determine that the samples, swab samples did contain blood and that blood was human. We then subjected those swabs to genetic testing and determined that, again, the blood was from a female. Um, after that, we looked at the two reference samples. One of those was from a male. The second was from a female. That one was labeled K, and it was taken from Katja. The genetic profile that we obtained from the hands and feet samples 
and from the reference sample from Katja uh, matched across several discriminating DNA markers. So, Ms. Colandro, uh, this was Katya's blood that emanated from the stigmata and there was nothing else unusual about that sample? We could not exclude Katya as the source and we did not find any evidence of a source other than Katya in that sample. You have been so gracious to be with us tonight. We thank you so much for your expertise. Nice talking to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Giselle, the <laughs> blood results were normal. It was simply the filming that was extraordinary. So you're not disappointed? Well, how can you be disappointed with a film like that? It was pretty extraordinary. If we looked for too much in the blood, we didn't get it. In the filming, we got the extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And I certainly have never seen anything like that before, Michael. All right, the signs of God we have been investigating tonight are often accompanied by a message. And one constant theme of the messages worldwide over the last 10 to 20 years has been that if man does not turn back to God, there will be a steady increase in natural disasters in our time. Is it just a coincidence, then, that the last decade of our century has been the most punishing of all? Earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, and volcanic eruptions. Natural disasters that have affected close to a billion people in the past five years alone. Destroying lives and livelihoods. We have seen an increase in the severities of catastrophes during the 1990s. Those who add up the cost of these natural disasters call them acts of God. Could they be closer to the truth than they realize? Records of natural disasters have been kept since the year 1900. Fact one, a third of all natural disasters that have occurred in this century came in the 1990s. Fact two, the world has an average of 700 natural disasters per decade, but the 1990s have already been hit by 2,400, three times the average. Not only are they more frequent, but they are also more severe. In fact, nine out of ten of the most costly natural disasters to have occurred in this country have occurred in the last ten years. Fact three, floods now affect 130 million people a year, a 700% increase compared to the 70s. Fact four, hurricanes and tornadoes affected six times as many people in the 90s, a 600% increase. As the pattern continues, again comparing the 70s to the 90s, four times as many people were affected by volcanic eruptions, twice as many affected by landslides. Fact five, from 1960 to 1989, there was only one year when the United States had a thousand or more tornadoes. But in the 90s, the U.S. has had at least a thousand every year. Insurance companies have come up with a new phrase for this late century phenomenon. They call these mega catastrophes, where the cost of property is calculated in tens of billions of dollars. But the cost of human life cannot be so neatly measured. In a remote part of New Guinea last year, a tidal wave literally wiped four villages off the face of the earth. In dollar value, the huts did not amount to much. Yet 2,600 lives were lost that day. A mega catastrophe or yet another act of God? <laughs> As we attempt to gain some perspective on what we have seen tonight, let's hear once again from a Catholic Church authority, Father Peter Stravinskis, a noted writer and teacher. Once again, thank you for joining us, Father. Thank you. You've just seen this increase in natural disasters at the century's end. Is this a coincidence or a message from God? Well, of course, we've always had natural disasters, but certainly the frequency and the intensity that you have identified uh, certainly ought to make us uh, stand up and take notice. Uh, if we look at all of the extraordinary supernatural phenomena that have been reported, let's leave it just at this century, there is one consistent message. 
whether it's Fatima or more recent uh, church-approved apparitions, it is the message of Christ at the beginning of his public ministry. Repent and believe in the gospel. And I suppose that our Lord is saying, or his blessed mother, uh, very simply that perhaps if we haven't been heeding the very simple but profound message of the gospel for 2,000 years, uh, perhaps this is another wake-up call, another opportunity to, to rouse our sensibilities to the fundamental call to repentance. Father, what's your reaction to the apparent stigmata of Cartier? I think that uh, my my approach would be still extremely cautious. Uh, the church has very clear procedures for reacting to these uh, alleged extraordinary phenomena, and um, I, from what I can determine, those procedures have been followed very carefully in this case. Uh, there is still, as far as I know, no definitive acceptance of the supernatural character. I think it's also important to point out to our viewers that while the church might approve an apparition or some kind of supernatural phenomenon, it does not require Catholics to believe in those phenomena, even if approved. They're declared worthy of belief, which is to say a Catholic is free to believe in it if he chooses, but need not do so. Father Stravinskis, thanks for your time. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Michael, I am wondering, did you have any insight to the moments when Katya says she actually sees Jesus? Very much so, Giselle. Uh, in our major interview with Cartier, it was quite a revelation. We'd already seen Cartier say she saw Jesus when we were doing the EEG testing. In an interview later, two things happened. One, at one time, she appeared to be using the words of someone else. When I asked her, she said Jesus was telling her what to say. And two, she said that Jesus appeared to her as we were talking. Again, this is a very important opportunity for viewers to make their own judgment on Cartier's credibility. I started by asking her about the appearance of Jesus during the EEG testing. How did he look? Hermoso. Beautiful. He was wearing a white tunic without a robe. He was in a white tunic, smiling. His eyes were very light. Very beautiful. Hermoso. Beautiful. Cardia, tell me what you see when you're looking over my shoulder. Por encima tu cabeza, Above your head, Mike. Cuando when tu you're asking me how he looks, he was smiling face right face. behind you Ese so that I could describe him to you. Tuyo. Is he there now? Si. Do you want to talk with him? No, I don't need to. Katia, is this the first time you've seen Jesus like this? Mm -hmm. Yes, but I see his full figure. He was there as if there was a man there? Sí. If your judgment is that Katia is telling the truth, then Jesus appears again 20 minutes into the interview. You may care to concentrate on Cartier's eyes and look for any unusual reflection. What are the sins that most offend Jesus? All sins are an offense to God. There is no such thing as a big lie or a small lie. It is a lie. There is not a small theft or a big theft. It is theft. Pero pienso yo que but I think el que the no thing that hurts Jesus the most is arrogance. Katia, of all the messages you've received, if you had to make one simple summary of them, what would it be? Que le está esperando, si that he is always waiting for his children. And that when we say yes to him, he is very prodigal with his love and mercy. Cardi, were you seeing Jesus when you were telling me that? He was speaking to me about his love and mercy. Does he have anything else to say? That he expects that each one of these words fall like dewdrops. drops. 
para consolar to comfort y curar and los heal men's hearts. Porque el mundo Because the world is full of pain and suffering. You keep looking. Y dice que él también te está mirando a ti, Mike. He says that he is looking at you, Mike, and he is blessing the work that you are doing. He says that these words are for you also. While we were editing this footage, one of our editors noticed a strange reflection in Katia's left eye. We decided to computer enhance her eyes to get a closer look. As you look at your screen, it's on the right hand side. There is no doubt that at this moment, the light has changed and appears to be brighter. It's definitely different. I don't know what's, what's causing it, but there's, uh, there's a, a lot more definition in the reflection, and there's nothing, nothing that's changed in the camera setup or anything. So, whatever it's reflecting is, is definitely stronger. He says that he also looks at you, Mike. Katia says she could see Jesus. Was that his reflection in her eye? That's one question in this investigation that science can't answer. The judgment must be yours. A reflection of something divine, at the very least thought-provoking. And we conclude our special Signs from God by returning one last time to Bolivia, where Katya Divas has been watching our broadcast live. I'm going to welcome Katya and thank her for sharing her story with us. Buenas noches, Katia. Gracias por compartir su historia con nosotros. Buenas noches, Giselle. Gracias por, por presentarme esta noche entre ustedes. Gracias a, a usted, Katia. Thank you to you. Mike está aquí. Mike is here. Y él quiere saludarla. He wants to ask you a question, and I'm sure say hello to his friend, Mike. Katia, firstly, thank you for everything, and what did you think of the program? Mike uh, dice gracias y también él te pregunta, uh, ¿ya vio el programa? ¿Cómo te sientes? Eh, me siento muy emocionada seguramente, igual que ustedes, y me imagino que el Señor también se siente igual. You want to ask her something else, Mike? I'm sure Cat you want to ask her she has another message. Yeah, Katia, do you have messages from Jesus? Mike también yes. te pregunta si puedes ver a Dios en este momento yes. y si tiene un nuevo mensaje para nosotros, okay. Katia. No, no lo veo, pero sí tengo el mensaje y lo voy a leer yeah. en este momento. But yes, I do have the message and I will read it right now. Por favor, gracias. Querido hombre del siglo XX, Dear man of the 20th century, me han olvidado. you have forgotten me. Vengo otra vez para sacarlos. I will be coming back again. De la oscuridad to, y take you, to take you away from the darkness and show you la fe verdadera. the true faith. Vengo a I come to hug you. Quiero colocar mi corazón junto al de ustedes. I want to put my heart next to your heart para transmitir mi amor a toda la humanidad. to transmit my love to all humanity. Quieren abrazarme. Do you want to hug me? Tu alma es delicada como el pétalo de una rosa. Your souls are delicate as a rose petal. Déjame imprimir en ella mi huella. Let me impress in, in, in it my love. Katia, a lot of people are watching this program tonight. What do you want them to take away from the program? Katia, mucha gente está viendo este programa y... ¿Te gustaría que la gente recordara? ¿Qué quieres que ellos recordaran? Que recuerden I want them to remember que tenemos un Cristo, un Cristo vivo that we have a live Christ en la Sagrada Eucaristía in Eucharistic, you know, religion. que Jesús está esperándonos allá. Jesus is for us. 
Y que nadie olvide todo el sufrimiento de Jesús por cada uno de nosotros. And please don't forget Jesus suffering for all, for all of us. Katia, nuevamente again, mil gracias for your story, for sharing your intimate story with us. Fue un gran placer, a great pleasure. And Michael, what a pleasure to do this Thank story you, with you. It's been quite extraordinary. Your final thoughts? Uh, it's changed me considerably, and I hope it uh, gives a lot of people a lot to think about. From Fox Studios in Los Angeles, I'm sure they will. Thank you so very much. It's been quite a pleasure again. Um, I certainly believe in the power of faith, if nothing else. I'm Giselle Fernandez with the very talented and respected Mike Willisey from Fox Studios in Los Angeles. Thank you all very much for joining us tonight. Signs from God. Faith, fact, we will let you, the viewer, be the judge. Good night, everyone.